OK, so we're going to rationalise the denominator of this fraction, where we've got a cube root term in the denominator. So getting rid of the square root term is still straightforward enough. We can still apply this procedure of multiplying by root 3 minus the cube root of 2 over root 3 minus the cube root of 2, so that we don't change the value of the fraction. And in the denominator, we're essentially following the structure of difference of two squares. The a plus b multiplied by a minus b is always equivalent to a squared minus b squared. So that our root 3 term in the new denominator is going to be root 3 squared with no other root 3 terms. So we've replaced that now by an integer. So when we carry out this multiplication, we get 23 root 3 minus 23 times the cube root of 2. And our new denominator becomes root 3 squared is 3 minus the cube root of 2 squared, which I'll write as 2 to the power of 2 thirds. So remember that the cube root of 2 is 2 to the power of 1 third. So we still need to deal with this 2 to the 2 thirds term, and we'd quite like to apply a similar trick where we end up with 2 to the 2 thirds raised to the power of 3, and no other powers of 2 to the 2 thirds. So we're essentially looking for, because we've got a difference here, we want a minus b multiplied by something is equivalent to something where we've got 2 to the 2 thirds raised to the power of 3. So a sensible guess would be a cubed minus b cubed. And this isn't just a completely random guess, because you can think about this as, you think about a cubed minus b cubed as a polynomial in the variable a, then you know by the factor theorem, because this is equal to 0 when a equals b, the factor theorem tells you that a minus b has to be a factor of this polynomial. So you know that there will be something you can multiply by to get a cubed minus b cubed. So then we have a minus b, if you carry out some polynomial division, or you can just check by expanding the brackets, we get a squared plus ab plus b squared will give us a cubed minus b cubed. So we could now multiply by this with 3 and 2 to the 2 thirds as our a and b respectively, and then this would help us to rationalise the denominator. But actually at this point it's quite interesting to think about generalising this to not just third roots, but what if we had a fourth root or a fifth root or an nth root? And this generalisation is actually going to give us a little shortcut to help us to rationalise the denominator of the original problem. So if we went to, for example, deal with a fourth root in the denominator, then you can show that a to the 4 minus b to the 4 is always equivalent to a minus b multiplied by a cubed plus a squared b plus a b squared plus b cubed. And you can see there's this structure of a cubed, a squared, a, and then no power of a. And there's actually a more general result that if you have a minus b multiplied by a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n minus 2 times b and so on, all the way up to just b to the power of n minus 1. This is always going to be equivalent to a to the n minus b to the n. So this could help you deal with any nth root in your denominator. So you could prove this general result actually by considering this polynomial here as a geometric sequence where your common ratio would be b over a. So you've got the partial sum of a geometric sequence there. And this is really useful now, because if we think back to our original problem, you've got a square root and a cube root. So actually, if you could raise both of these terms just to the power of 6, then we could do this without having to expand a pair of brackets here. And you could have a minus b, if we apply this formula now with, so this is going to be equivalent to a to the 6 minus b to the 6, we just need to multiply by a to the 5 plus a to the 4 times b and so on, all the way up to b to the power of 5. And this will give us a to the 6 minus b to the 6. So our root 3 raised to the power of 6 is going to be an integer, and similarly the cube root of 2 is going to be an integer, and that's raised to the power of 6. And now we need to multiply by this polynomial where we've got our a minus b corresponds to root 3 plus the cube root of 2, which we'll just write as 3 to the half plus 2 to the third. So here we'll have a is going to be root 3, or a is 3 to the power of 1 half. And here minus b corresponds to a positive 2 to the 1 third, so actually b is going to be negative, so you have negative 2 to the 1 third. And at this point, you could actually take out a factor of a plus b instead. This would also work. You'd get a slightly different polynomial to avoid dealing with 
the negative b's, but we'll just proceed here with the negative value of b. So then we multiply the numerator 23 by all of this, a to the power of 5 first of all is 3 to the power of 5 over 2, then plus a to the 4 times b, so this is going to be negative because we've got b to the power of 1, so minus 3 to the 4 over 2, which is just going to give us a 9, times 2 to the 1 third. Our next term is positive because we've got a b squared, so the negatives cancel, so we have plus 3 to the 3 over 2 times 2 to the 2 over 3, and then our next term is going to be negative, we have minus a squared is just going to be 3 to the 2 over 2, or 3, multiplied by 2 to the 3 over 3, which is just 2. So this entire term is actually just 6, which is particularly nice. Then for our next term we have 3 to the half times 2 to the 4 over 3, and finally we have a negative 2 to the 5 over 3 for our b to the 5 term without any a's. So this is our whole numerator now in an unsimplified form. And our denominator we already know is going to be a to the 6 minus b to the 6. So this is going to be root 3 raised to the power of 6 minus negative 2 to the 3rd raised to the power of 6. So 3 to the half raised to the power of 6 is just 3 cubed or 27. And then we're going to take away negative 2 to the 3rd raised to the power of 6 is just going to be 2 squared or 4. So we take away 4 and you see this is particularly nice now because we get 23 for our denominator which cancels with our factor of 23 up here. So there's actually no denominator in the end, we just have all of this bracket which we can now simplify to get our final answer. So our first term is just 3 to the 5 over 2, we can't simplify this particularly much. And then our next term is going to be 9 times 2 to the power of 1 third. Then we have 3 to the 3 over 2 multiplied by 2 to the 2 over 3, which doesn't really simplify. Then this next term is actually just minus 6. Then we have plus 3 to the half times 2 to the 4 over 3, and finally minus 2 to the 5 over 3. So we get all of this expression now is equivalent to our original fraction, but now we've rationalised the denominator.